Hello and welcome to my website. This website I actually uh, titled Born in Hell and um, I had written uh, some, uh, been doing some writing for a few years now and published uh, some books and whatnot and had written a poem and, and started out Born in Hell so I thought I'd continue on with that theme. Um, my name is Laurie Smith and I am a an abuse, child abuse survivor and uh, just really an advocate out here making noise and speaking up standing up for children's rights, for human rights, and uh, just be one more voice out here really for for the voiceless, for those whose voices have been silenced, um, you know, through, you know, because they were abused and possibly murdered and killed, and those who remain silent uh, due to circumstances, fear for their lives, uh, shame, ridicule, uh, not wanting to rock the boat in the family, and uh, or that type of thing or just wanting to remain very private there's lots of people who are really choose not to speak out about the abuse that they suffered and everyone has to do you know what they feel is best for them they have to you know you have to make the best decision for yourself for me i really didn't have anything to lose uh, i didn't have a family to lose i never i mean i grew up in a large family nine people all together and um uh, there was uh, seven, I'm the last of seven siblings, I'm the last last child. And, uh, but there's nobody, you know, who's going to try to silence me. They all know the truth, and truth hurts, you know. it's uh, I speak publicly about uh, my own story, as well as just child abuse prevention information. And so, welcome to my website. Take a look around. Under the About section, you'll see all my links, and um, most of them are there uh, for anything that's relevant that what I'm doing right now. Um, in working, you know, to stop and prevent child abuse, um, I'm uh, I started uh, and co-founded Advocates United for Humanity uh, with Donna Shear and Lee Roberts, and that's a new not-for-profit that we just got going. And we hope to do a lot of work in the field of stopping violence against all mankind, and especially focusing on child abuse, domestic violence, and bullying, things like that. Um, just being a voice and, and being a, a resource for people. So I hope you will check out the website. It's under the About section. As well as um, we founded, uh, Donna Shear and myself founded uh, Northern Books, which we will publish and, you know, try to help authors either learn how to become self-published or help them to get published or, or will publish their work. And so we have several in-house authors that write with us. And my books featured there, Donna M. Donna M. Shear is actually a relatively famous author, a best-selling author. And um, she's also an advocate. Um, and she's my, you know, she's my sister, and so is Lee Roberts, both my sisters in Christ. So we work on these projects together. We're not doing it for money. We're doing it because we want to help people and in whatever way we can with whatever we can do and uh, with, our, with whatever, you know, with what we have to work with in this world. And... Um, so it's not all about uh, money, and it's really about making a difference in this world while we're here. And so I hope that you'll check that website out as well. It's on the it's under the about section. I also have a, a video section that this is where this, this video will end up, as well as other future videos that I do, and I plan on doing some more in the future, hopefully. Um, most of my work is audio, and I do a lot of audio work on Spreaker right now, Spreaker.com. And um, you can find that link there on my up under the about section, as well as I've done like oh, 1101 shows on uh, Blog Talk Radio. Blog Talk Radio, that's where I started out first speaking out publicly against abuse and talking about my own story. When I first started Blog Talk Radio back in 2009, it was November 23rd, 2009, and I uh, was very nervous about coming out with my story. I had I had told people over the years about my story, and people, you know, growing up abused, you know, in my youth, I had friends who knew that I was being abused, and I had, you know, lots of people knew that I was being abused. Uh, the, the system and the courts knew I was being abused, <laughs> so it wasn't a secret. But the thing is, is I didn't talk to very many people about it, and um, I was really just trying to survive. And some of my friends saw, you know, the aftermath of, of uh, certain, you know, beatings that I would get from my mother, especially, and some from my dad, and actually witnessed some of it. And um, so they were being abused as well. We were all growing up in these dysfunctional homes. I detail that in my books, The Life of Death or Redemption, as well as La Vida Juvies and One Child Abuse Survivor to Another, um, The Journey. So, you know, 
it's uh, it wasn't easy to come forward with this publicly. Uh, I really did it as a it was it was a, it was a way to save my life because I was really I had come to a point in my life at the age of 42 that I just felt I could not carry the load anymore, and I. I was never suicidal, but I always had suicidal ideation because I speak about this on speaker, I speak quite a bit. But my parents were both mentally ill. They both were psychologically ill, uh, mentally ill, you name it. They had problems. Um, they were suicidal. My mom uh, was mostly suicidal ideation. My dad was suicidal. He used to try to kill himself. And um, he was uh, borderline schizophrenic as well as borderline personality disorder. My mother was um, bipolar. And my brother was diagnosed uh, bipolar at the time. They used to call it uh, manic depression. And so, um, you know, it was a horrific situation to come up to, to grow up in. And so that's why I titled this Born in Hell, because it really was a living hell for everyone in that home, not just myself. I speak a lot. I don't really talk for my brothers and sisters, um, but I talk, I tell their story. And... Two of my siblings are still living. The other um, four are not. Um, two of my brothers, uh, one died of a drug overdose, one killed himself, committed suicide by hanging. Uh, one of my brothers was murdered, and then another, my sister died of cancer. My, the oldest child in the family died of cancer at the age of 60. So she's been gone a few years now. And I'm the last born. So there's only two siblings alive that I, that I know of. I'm not in contact with my family. Uh, I have no contact whatsoever with any of them. And they know what I do. They don't speak out against it. They don't try to come against me to say, you know, that I should stop speaking about our family and, and whatnot. Be, you know, they, they don't have anything to say to me at all. Um, I'm sure they're not happy about the fact that I came forward. But it was a hard decision to make. Uh, I really thought about it very carefully before coming out publicly with my story and uh, with our family story. And I thought about uh, the repercussions. I thought about you know, would, would there be any repercussions and would, would this really better my life or make it worse? You know, and I really did a lot of thinking before I came out publicly. I started writing a public facing blog called Not for Not So Fond Memories, Growing Up in an Abuse in Abusive Home. And um, people were suggesting that I publish it. They were like, You need to publish this. And then I started doing a blog talk radio show after listening to Gail Trab Gail Crabtree, um, a Hope for Healing. And uh, this was way back, 2009. <laughs> I heard her show and I thought, <clears throat> I'll do a show. And I'll just call it Child Abuse Prevention is Up to Us. And um, and uh, at the time I was working through uh, like a degree for international community development and human rights and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it just seemed right the right thing to do. But I, I, I started speaking very much about my story and it did turn into really my healing journey because... I started my healing journey back in 2007, just two years prior to that, and had done very little work in it. I had come some distance, you know, from wanting to end my life, sitting on the couch, wanting to, wanting the pain to be over. I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how I was going to go on as a survivor of abuse and no support from family, uh, friends, you know, my relationships with people really were very, oh, I don't know, just not very good because of my own survivor issues, right? I wouldn't say it's all my fault, but a lot of it and some of it was. So, you know, just sitting around just thinking over, you know, throughout the years, looking back and saying, you know, I always hit these points in my life, you know, whether it was, uh, you know, 13, you know, 16, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, you know, finally to the age of 42 where I wanted to end my life. And I thought, you know, this is so bad and so heinous what I went through and what my family went through, all at the cause of, of my abusive parents and one of my brothers, um, it's heinous, and I I can't carry this load anymore. I just want out of this pain. And I thought, no, there's safety in numbers. I'm going to tell the world what happened. And I started to write this blog, this public-facing blog, and then started speaking about my story on Blog Talk Radio. So that's where this all came from. And so, you know, I, I'm just a regular person. You know, I work for a living. Um, busy, you know, I've got a, a husband who's dying, terminally ill. He's been terminally ill for 15 years, and he's still here, and uh, praise God. So, you know, it's just by the grace of God that I'm still here. And so um, I just wanted to be one more voice for people out, out here, you know, one more voice for the voiceless to raise awareness, you know, what are the issues? What are children What are children really going through? You know, the, the papers, you know, sure do show us a lot of stories and a lot of 
headlines out here in the, in the, in the internet and the web of, of children dying needlessly at the hands of someone who's taking their lives, you know, whether they die, whether they're murdered outright, or whether they are, you know, the abuse was just, the, the physical abuse, they just die from their injuries, you know, and there's, that's just the ones reported, that's just the ones you, that, that are reported. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of cases of unreported child abuse out there. Now, in my case, in my case, my parents were brought up in abuse charges way back when I was a little girl, and I was probably two years old. Um, you know, they were, we had social workers around. I mean, they were checking for signs of abuse so for a couple of years. They were around. My parents, while that was going on, had to maintain. So the abuse kind of leveled out. As soon as the social workers were out of the picture, by the time I was about four or five years old, the abuse started up again. And, they, you know, the violence really didn't stop towards my, between my parents. They had to watch what they were doing to the kids because we were all under supervision and, you know, having regular checkups from the social workers who would come in and literally check for signs of abuse. And um, so they couldn't do anything. But while, after they were gone, it all started all over again. And so, you know, I've got validation because, you know, I, I mean, our case was documented. My parents were arrested and brought up on abuse charges. But um, there's so many people out there who, who have no validation. And, and they've got a family that's telling them, oh, it wasn't that bad because I've heard that lots of times. And, you know, they've got a world telling them, can't you just get over it? You know, so they got a family telling them, oh, it wasn't that bad. Or you're just making it up. Or that must have been in your imagination. Or you're just dreaming. Or you're just lying or whatever. Then you got a world out there, a whole world out there saying, can't you just get over it? I do a lot of talking on survivor issues, and that's the reason why. I want people to know, and I want survivors to know, you do not ever give up. You deserved so much better than that. So did I. We deserve help. We deserve to, to live a decent life, being treated with respect, we, we need to then treat people with respect, but what, you know, we, we need to be treated as we would treat others with respect, with dignity, you know, with compassion, with empathy, with care, with kindness. You know, we deserve that. We did not deserve to be abused. So if you, if you're a survivor and you're listening to this, you get some help, you reach out. I'm so glad that I did. 2007 is the year that I actually decided to reach out. I was 42 years old, wanting to end my life and... That year, I made the decision to reach out and start getting some help. And I'm so glad that I did. And I, I want to encourage you to please do that. Get some help. Find some trustworthy, you know, resources. Find some trustworthy people out there. And be careful with your information. Be careful with, you know, who you, who you get involved with. But find some trustworthy people and, you know, get some help and reach out, you know. And, uh, and whatever you do, do not give up. For anybody who chooses to listen to my stuff, you have to listen at your own discretion. All of my work, including my books, uh, most of it's pretty explicit. Most of it is very graphic. Um, you know, if you're a survivor and you're on your healing journey, you need to be in a safe place when you're listening to my stuff, any of my stuff, uh, mainly except for my biblical stuff that I do. I'm a, I, I've got an associate in biblical studies, and I do a lot of Bible, Bible uh, study shows. But So those are fine. But anything I'm talking about abuse or my story, you need to listen at your own discretion and be very, very careful if you're a survivor and you're on your healing journey, to know where you're at in your healing journey and know whether or not you should be listening. If you're a minor under the age of 18, you need to have parental consent to listen to my stuff dealing with child abuse. The biblical stuff is fine, but anything to do with my, the, the title, you know, to do with my story or anything that isn't biblical that's about child abuse and, uh, or, you know, things like that, you need to have parental consent to listen to my shows or have an adult um, listen to them first and then tell you whether or not you should be listening to it or not. Uh, I have no idea how young the children are that will be watching my stuff and listening to it. And I always put a discretionary warning on on um, my stuff for that I think maybe possibly younger people will be listening to. You need to make sure you, that you're safe. And you know, I'm all about child protection, child safety. And so, you know, I just say, you know, have someone listen to it who's an adult to have them listen to it with you. Make sure that it's okay for something that you should be listening to, depending on age appropriateness, right? And... Um, so, yeah, take a look around. You know, I'll be posting lots and lots of more material. I'm going to put all my shows on here from um, um, Blog Talk Radio as well as Spreaker, and it'll be like a one-stop place for people to find my stuff. My stuff is all over the web. It's kind of hard for people to keep track of what I'm doing, and I thought I really needed to have a centralized location. And I also want to really expound, you know, and expand upon my story a little bit. I, I only did so much of that in my books, and my books are what they are, and, you know, I, I'm happy with the outcome, but... 
I couldn't go into just so many details, page after page. I did detail a lot of stuff that I actually don't talk about on the air because it's too vulgar, and either that or it's too explicit. Um, One Child Abuse Survivor to Another the Journey, that book is about the CSA child sexual abuse and incest that I suffered at the hands of my brother, who was 13 years older than me. I was 8 years old, he was 21. And, um, you know, I do, in that book, uh, it's, it's an explicit book, it's got an explicit warning, that is for adults only. There's a lot of um, very, very sensitive material in that book. I don't really talk about that stuff on my shows, because it's just not appropriate for the air. But, um, you know, if you want to get a hold of my stuff, you, you can see it. It's out there. You can check out my links and, and whatnot. But whatever you do, just be safe when you're looking at my stuff. It's very, very graphic. But truth is, is important. If we're ever going to make a difference in this, you know, if we're ever going to make a difference in, in, in changing this for children, we need to be brutally honest because what happened to me was brutally horrific. And what happens to survivors out here, I know so many people who, have, who are survivors who went through a lot worse than I did. I just don't mind speaking out against this stuff and speaking about it publicly. I know people who have gone through so much worse. And it's just brutality against a child. You know, this is horrific. It's it's absolutely horrific. If we don't speak the truth about it and we just candy coat it with nice, pleasant words and, oh, you know, let's just keep it pleasant. Child abuse is not pleasant. When you're being beaten and raped and, you know, sodomized and, um, you know, burned and thrown into walls and kicked and punched and name-calling and screaming and thrown out of the house. That's not, you know, there's nothing very pleasant about that. And so I don't try to candy-coat abuse, you know. I don't feel it's, I feel that that does uh, survivors an injustice. You know, what we went through was hell. And, you know, some of us were born in hell and right, born in hell from the womb on up. You know, and it's like there's many, many people out here. I just really hope that, you know, anybody who's listening will know that, you know, you need to reach out and get help. And uh, I just wanted to be really just one more voice out here speaking out on behalf of survivors who, who whose, whose voices have been silenced by because they were killed or because they died from the abuse or took their own lives or, you know, some crazy thing like that. Or just, you know, just absolutely cannot speak about these things, right? I know lots of people who have confided in me that they cannot tell anybody what happened to them because it would just, it just can't, they can't allow anybody to know what happened to them. So I speak out on behalf of those people, you know, as a voice out here to say, this is absolutely horrific. It's got to stop. And it starts with, with, with parents. It starts with the parent. It starts with the mother. It starts with the father. It starts with the caregiver, whoever's looking after those children, it starts with the people, you know, the teachers. It starts with all of the people that are responsible for making sure that the, the welfare of the child is being protected and that that child is getting all of their needs met and that that child is not being abused. That's who it starts with. And so, you know, I don't mind making noise out here. So thanks, everybody. I will be back and um, take a look around, check out some of my older audios from 19, uh, actually not to 19, uh, from 2009. And that's as far back as I go with the audio, 2009. But um, those are my original shows. I was very nervous doing those shows and was just starting to come forward with my story and didn't quite know how to present it. It was very uh, a little bit scary for me. Uh, after, towards the, uh, I don't know, couple, 30, 40 shows into it, I really started to feel comfortable about speaking about it. And I thought, no, this has got to be done. And I really needed to do it for my own healing journey. And so you'll notice at first I'm a little bit nervous. But after a while I start um, warming up to it and... Um, really getting into the issues, the real issues of what it is to be abused. So take a look around. Thanks, everybody, for your support over the years. Check out our website, Advocates United for Humanity, Northern Books. If you're interested in getting anything published, get a hold of us. Um, You know, just do what you can. Never be silent. We must always continue to speak about this. And you know why? Because the world would like to see this shoved under the carpet, just as abuser families would. Nobody wants anybody to tell the truth about their story because it, it, it causes embarrassment, it causes grief, it causes a possible, you know, court situations. You know what I mean? People may be brought up on charges. So, you know what? The world wants this shut down. And we need to keep talking about this because children are still dying and they're going to die today, they're going to die tonight. They're dying right now from abuse. We need to keep talking about this. And keep our voices active and out there. Whatever you do, whatever medium you choose to do, never be silent. And if you're a survivor, you get help. Even if it's one-on-one counseling, anonymous counseling, 
anonymous help, whatever. Do not suffer in silence and do not, do not ever uh, allow your past and your pain to destroy you. Not ever. You got to win this fight. That's what I, that's what I, my main thing was back when I started this was, you know what, I'm going to stay alive at the age of 42, wanting to kill myself and wanting it to be over and was just at the edge. I couldn't go any further. And I, and I, and I, I, I just got, this thing came in, alive inside of me. I said, I got to stay alive and I need to, to be victorious in this. My parents, you know, two of my brothers killed themselves. You know, our family was destroyed. And, you know, if I would have gone and done that and ended my life or just continued on in this mess, my parents would have won. And my sibling. No, I win this fight because I stay alive and I'm having a good life and, you know, I'm getting things, you know, situation, situated. You know, my healing journey is well, well, pretty well done. And, you know, I'm so thankful to be on this side of it. That's why I keep telling all these survivors out here, you just keep doing it. One more day, you just keep doing it. You keep getting up, you keep going, and keep reaching out until you find somebody, someone who can help you. And you make the right decision. And you stick around. You win this fight. And we'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye.